I'm Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. This is my review of The Sword of Shannara by Terry Brooks. Um, before we get to that, though, I just wanted to mention uh, on my last video about J.R.R. Tolkien and Lord of the Rings, I mentioned that when I was in college, I had used to do a lot of illustrations for Magic the Gathering and uh, Iron Crown Enterprises, who did the old Lord of the Rings uh, card game back in the 90s. I forgot to show people, this is the set of uh, Lord of the Rings card games, and these are some of the uh, illustrations I did for that, like Tom Bombadil, some orcs fighting, some elves in the woods, elves in the woods. I did a lot of elves in the woods. Anyway, I, 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 I've regretted not uh, showing these cards to you during my Tolkien video, but I, I'm showing them to you now. Anyway, so let's talk about the Sword of Shannara and uh, the important role it played in my life, not only as a reader and a collector of books, but also as a, a fantasy author myself. Um, uh, when I was a kid... Uh, Growing up in Sevier County, Utah, and I've mentioned this on several of my videos before. Um, if you don't know where Sevier County, Utah is, just just imagine uh, what Sevier County might look like, and you pretty much got it. It's in the middle of the desert. There's nothing there. I've said this before. Like uh, when I was growing up there, I felt like Luke Skywalker in uh, on Tatooine. If there was a center to the universe, then um, you know Sevier County was the farthest thing from it. And I mean, it really was. We just didn't have a lot going on down there, and including books. There was a bookmobile that would drive through town every now and then, but you know, I, I, I was too young. I, I wasn't into books then. However, when I was in junior high school, my art teacher had this book called, it was an art book called The Art of the Brothers Hildebrand. And one of the things that I, I became obsessed with this book, there was a lot of Tolkien paintings, but there was also a lot of paintings from another book called The Sword of Shannara. And uh, if you have uh, The Sword of Shannara, you probably have seen the inside illustrations that the Hildebrand brothers did. The black and whites. Uh... You know, it's an interesting thing, thing about this book. If you look at it, Every single printing they did of the Art of the Brothers Hildebrandt had a lot of the paintings printed upside down. <laughs> Don't ask me why, but it's every single copy I've ever run across has the same misprint. Um, but anyway, I became obsessed with this art book and the Tolkien illustrations and the sort of Shannara illustrations. And it uh, took me a little bit of time before I realized, you know, uh, after I'd sketch these things out and I would copy these paintings with my, you know, and I would sketch them out and, and, uh, I mean, I sketched every single one of those out myself freehand and just to copy what the artists were doing, the brothers Hildebrandt. And, uh, it took me a while before I realized, you know, these paintings are based off of books that, you know, maybe I could read. And I remember, uh, Getting a, a few copies, I remember getting some uh, paperback copies of uh, The Lord of the Rings from the little paperback rack in the local Safeway store. And about the same time, uh, and I think it might have been before, I think it was about in the, within the same week of buying those paperbacks at the uh, grocery store. I also, um, oh, it must have been before that because I had not found the paperbacks of The Lord of the Rings in the grocery store yet. Because before that, I had... Um, I did. I wanted to get a copy of the Sword of Shannara, and I just didn't know how to buy books at the time, and um, because I hadn't discovered the paperback rack in the in the in the grocery store yet. So what I did was I got in the phone book, a Salt Lake City phone book, and I looked up bookstores in Salt Lake City, and I, I found a bookstore called Sam Weller's, and uh, I thought, well, maybe if I uh, send them a five dollar bill with a note saying, "Send me the Sword of Shannara," they would do it. You know, I was that naive. And, uh, so I, I wrote a letter and, uh, just uh, in my own little kid brain, I thought, well, if I type the letter out, it'll look more official and they won't steal my five bucks. Right. So I got my mom's typewriter and, uh, put a piece of paper in it and started typing away. Well, 
for those of you who don't know what a typewriter is, it's, um, as Kevin J. Anderson said, it's a, uh, it's kind of like a, a steampunk version of a, of a laptop computer and a printer all in one. And so for you younger viewers that have never heard of the oh, typewriter, you know, just imagine like a steampunk little laptop that you can you clank away on. And little things inside of little metal gears inside of it go. And then you go. And then it tight. And then it prints the stuff out right there in front of you. It's kind of like, uh, anyway, I thought if I wrote a letter that was typed that, and, and, and sent $5 in the envelope that they would send me a copy of the sword of Shannara. Sorry, my cat is going to knock over the um, camera and I don't want her to do that. Um, so, uh, so I typed this letter up saying, please send me this copy of the Sword of Shannara, sent it in the mail with my $5 bill. And sure enough, within about a few days, they sent me a copy of the Sword of Shannara. And I still have that very copy. Um, it is right here. This is it. You can see, if I get up real close, you can see the wonderful Hildebrandt Brothers cover. And man, they just don't do cover illustrations on fantasy novels anymore like they like like they used to in the 80s i mean this is this like when i look at this it just fills me with magic and wonder and it takes me back to when i was a kid when i first got this book in the mail sent to me from sam weller's books in salt lake city and i just i i i read this i think about i think i finished the i bought this came in the mail just a few days after i bought the um Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit from the grocery store uh, rack. And I think I read the Hobbit first, but then I read this second before I read the Lord of the Rings. And I knew within the, and I will tell you right now, I knew by page 81, line number 16 of this paperback, if you want to do your research and figure out what's in here, I knew by then that I wanted to be, because there was a line in this book that I, I, as soon as I read it, I, I knew I wanted to be a fantasy author and I knew I wanted to write epic fantasy books of my own. And if you find the line that I'm talking about, you're gonna, it's a spoiler alert for my entire series of uh, books here. Uh, but uh, it inspired, it actually inspired this entire um, Five Warrior Angel series. This is The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart is out now. I'll show you a cover of that in a little bit. And then the Lonesome Crown, I just turned into my publisher. But by literally by page 81 of the Sword of Shannara, I knew that I wanted to be a fantasy writer of my own and, the, and write my own books. I wanted to be an illustrator like the Brothers Hildebrands. I did. So I've done both, actually. Um, but anyway, let me read to you. Well, I'm going to take a, a, little, a little time and read to you the, the prologue to my own, this is the very first book I've ever published. And let me read the prologue, or, uh, not the prologue, but the acknowledgement page. And, uh, and uh, because it's going to give you a little bit of an idea of why the Sword of Shannara was so important to me as a youngster. Um, so this is the uh, acknowledgement page. It starts out, um, in introduction and acknowledgements. As someone who is adopted and know, knows nothing of his biological heritage, I've always been drawn to the heroic quest tales of orphans and bastards. Luke Skywalker was my favorite as a kid. Then came Terry Brooks, Shea Olmsford, Lloyd Alexander's Turan, David Eddings, Garion, Robert Jordan's Randall Thor, Tad Williams, Simon, George R.R. R. Martin's Jon Snow, and countless others. One might say these stories are in my blood, mysterious blood, that is. I have never met a blood relative, and to always feel unattached and adrift in the world is a unique thing indeed. Sometimes the anonymity is worn with pride, other times sorrow. Ever since I was a teen, I aimed to explore these themes in a fantasy story of my own. So as you, so as you read this series to its conclusion, beware. Assume nothing, trust no one, for in the end, do any of us know who we truly are? Do any of us ever show our true selves to the world? So as you can see, being adopted and then picking up a book, The Sword of Shannara, which was about a young boy who was a bastard boy who had no idea who his parentage was. 
it really struck a chord with me because the sort of Shannara took us on an adventure where Shea Olmsford, the young bastard boy in the story with a great destiny, went on to a bit of adventure and accomplished great things. And that was kind of like the way I felt the first time I ever watched Star Wars was, um, you know, Luke Skywalker was my hero. I, you know, he, he was a farm boy. I grew up, he was a desert farm boy. I grew up on a desert farm, uh, helping my grandfather farm. And, um, you know, I, uh, I just, I, I, I've always, I don't know. It's a trope that a lot of people don't like the farm boy with a destiny, you know, prophecy and, and, uh, you know, he's going to be a great king or leader or savior of the world and destroy the Dark Lord. All of that's a huge trope that a lot of people are getting kind of tired and weary of. Well, I I love the trope. I think it's fantastic. I It's talking straight to me. And uh, and I, I I could never get tired of it. And, and, and I wanted to play with some of those themes in my own story. And uh, if you ever read the Five Warrior Angels series that I wrote, you'll see how I kind of play with those themes and subvert those themes. But it all started with uh the sword of shinara and and you know and star wars uh but the when i and and, and i can still vividly recall uh the uh every character because another thing is this sort of shinara book like i said this is the original book that i got in the mail when i was a hey kitty look she's gonna knock everything over <laughs> she's gonna knock it all down <laughs> this is a low budget uh production here i do not do graphics I just do background crap, and the kitty, Miss Kitty, pretty Miss Kitty, my cat, is going to knock it all over here in a second. But anyway, um, The Sword of Shannara, I would read this book religiously once a year, every year, the whole time I was a teenager. This is the copy that I read. As you can see, it's still in unmarked, pristine, mint condition. I take care of all of my books. I, my, I hate cracked spines. I hate books that are just dirty and nasty. And quite frankly, if, if I know a book has been touched by another human being, it, it, I won't even read it. Um, but here is the uh, copy of the uh, Elf Stones of Shannara I bought, you know, a few years later. Um, the Wish Song of Shannara. I think that the original three Shannara books are some of the greatest fantasy books ever written, and I want to thank Terry Brooks for writing them. He inspired me to become a writer. Um, I've got every Shannara book that's been in print. I've got them all in hardcover, too. You can see that I've got the uh, Heritage of Shannara books here behind me. Now, these have Keith Parkinson paintings, and I've met Keith Parkinson before. He's, he's passed away, but he did a lot of great paintings. He did all the Terry Goodkind covers. He did a lot of the Terry Brooks covers. Um, Daryl K. Sweet did the cover of the Wish Song of Shannara. One day I might go ahead and review each Shannara book uh, itself, but for now I'm just going to kind of do an overview of all of them and and focus mostly on the Sword of Shannara. But Daryl K. Sweet, he did a lot of the Tolkien covers back in the 80s. He also did the Wheel of Time covers the from Robert Jordan, if you're familiar with those. Um, this is the Elf Stones of Shannara. Sorry about the glare. And then I want to show you my Sword of Shannara hardcover. I will mention that uh, I've had it signed by Terry Brooks numerous times. I've also had it signed by both Greg and Tim Hildebrandt, the artists that did the interior illustrations and the artists that did this magnificent cover, which the cover still gives me chills every time I look at it. Um, I can't say enough about how much the Sword of Shannara meant to me as a kid. I still reread it. I don't, I've, I've read all the Shannara books that have been in print at least once. The Sword of Shannara, I've probably read it about 15 times. The Elf Stones of Shannara, maybe 10 times. The Wish Song of Shannara, maybe five or six times. The rest of them about once. I know I've read this Heritage of Shannara series twice. I think it's pretty good. Um, the reason I like the Sword of Shannara the most of all of them was probably, uh, you know, um, I'm not a big fan of high magic, and uh, the Sword of Shannara had the least amount of magic in it. So if you if you kind of want more of a 
an adventure tale that uh, where the characters are kind of battling the elements and battling each other a little bit more than they're battling magic. The Sword of Shannara is for you. I think the Wish Song of Shannara is similar in tone. It's it's still kind of low magic, um, and the Wish Song too. But then once we get into the heritage of Shannara and some of the further things, the magic um, really starts to expand out into some weird stuff that that I wasn't a huge fan of, although I still love everything Terry Brooks does, and I'm not trying to bag on it, just because the later books I don't like as much as the first few books, um, because they're all great, and I can't wait till... I, I think that he's wrapping up the entire Shannara saga in um, in the next couple of books, um, and I pronounce it, and because I, I, I know I've been pronouncing it wrong my whole life, I pronounce it Shannara, it sounds better to me, I know... Most people, including the author, say Shannara. Um, now, as far as the um, uh, TV show that they did on the Elfstones of Shannara, I thought it was pretty low budget, mediocre, okay. Uh, I, I think that they followed the story somewhat, and then they added a lot of the weird magical stuff from some of the later books into it, which... I wish they would have kept it a little more low key and a little bit more, um, you know, low magic. Uh, but that's just my pre preference. I uh, anything that has a lot of outlandish magic in it, it kind of uh, turns me a little to the little bit more negative side. Whereas I like you know, more of the uh, low magic. I, I think Tolkien did great low magic. You know, he just you know, uh, Gandalf could wave his wand and things would happen. And, and that was about it. You know, it wasn't really explained. Um, and the magic in the Sword of Shinar not really explained that much. In fact, that's why the mystery of it was so awesome. It's kind of like, it's kind of like there were so many Shinara books that started to explain all of the magic that it kind of like the force in the Star Wars, it, 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 when once it gets explained a little too much, it sort of loses the magic loses its magic, if if you will. Um, but that being said, I have to do. I do have to say that the uh, Sword of Shannara is probably the single most uh, important book, or maybe piece of uh, other than Star Wars. I think the Sword of Shannara might be the single most important bit of uh, pop culture entertainment in my life. I mean, it it, ex it it inspired me to become not only an author. But in my younger years, when I was in college, also an illustrator, and I did a lot of illustrations for a Dungeons and Dragons game and a lot of uh, Magic the Gathering cards and Tolkien cards and just a lot of stuff. And you can look on my website and find all that. And uh, so that's my review of uh, The Sword of Shannara. Uh, I think it's a fantastic book. I think everybody should read it. I know it's derivative of Lord of the Rings, but I did read it before I read Lord of the Rings. I read it between The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. So to me, it didn't seem derivative of anything at the time. It seemed like the most fantastic thing I'd ever read uh, and still holds up to me and rereads. And maybe it's just the nostalgia of the thing that keeps drawing me back to it and and the, the Hildebrandt illustrations. Um, if, if you get a copy of the Sword of Shannara, please get one of the older 1980s copies with the Hildebrandt cover. The uh, newer covers are, yeah, you know, they're all right, but they're, you know, computer generated and uh, they're just not as uh, magical as the original. And um, uh, I think the cover artist of my books is great, um, which reminds me, I was going to show you all book two. The Blackest Heart, which is right here, published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press, also has the same cover artist as book one, Richard Anderson. Richard Anderson does a great job. So uh, The Forgetting Moon, just so you know, in July of 2019, it was the second biggest selling novel on Audible and Amazon in the world. I even surpassed uh, the Michelle Obama biography. But that uh, damn Reese Witherspoon uh, book club book, I could not knock it out of the number one spot. But I can say that I was a number two bestseller in the world <laughs> for a brief period of time. Uh, it's since fallen back down into regular, uh, you know, selling status for a guy of my stature, you know, whereas the Michelle Obama biography is still in the top ten. But, you know, whatever. She's a little more famous than I am. But I'll get there. I'll get there. 
Um, anyway, thanks for watching my review of The Sword of Shannara. And I hope you enjoyed it. And please subscribe below. I will be doing more reviews uh, in the future. Uh, I will be reviewing every single Stephen King novel soon. And I will be also reviewing a lot of other fantasy books and other books that I love, you know, like Shogun, Lonesome Dove, uh, Pillars of the Earth, you know, everything by Dennis Lehane. I'm going to review it. Uh, I've So far, I have uh, had this channel up for four years and maybe put to 20 videos, but I'm going to start doing two or three a week and uh, see if we can't get a following. And uh, please leave your comments below and uh, subscribe, push like, all the stuff that all the YouTube video people want you to do. I want you to do the same thing. And I appreciate you watching. Thank you very much. I'm going to turn it off right now.